Hey, how's it going? Well, take two. So today I'm talking about the flight attendant. YouTube disclaimer stuff. Um, <clears throat> so when I saw this for the first time, I was not interested. I was like, that does not appeal to me. I don't know why I thought that. I, I just assumed it was like a rom-com. And then COVID happened, and let me explain why I watch so much television. A, I like it, and B, I have physical challenges, so I'm home all day, and uh, then I get to do this. I get to talk about it. But um, I just, I, I thought it was a rom-com, and I pretty much... Am not in the market for those. I, not, I mean, it's I, not that I have a problem with romance and love and stuff on film, but I like action stuff, sci fi stuff where the focus is not necessarily on the romance portion of the story, but those elements are there and they're there just enough. <laughs> like, I don't want it to take over. Um, so, but that's what I thought it was. I thought it was Gushy and Hallmark Channel or whatever. I don't know. <laughs> I, and I didn't know. But then COVID happened and it was like, oh, shoot. All the stuff I want watch normally has kind of dried up and gone away. Like, it just ain't there anymore. So, I was rooting around for something else. And I had heard by then that... She, the flight attendant was a spy or something and I was like oh, okay I can check that out and so I did and then, I don't know nothing <laughs> it was really good <laughs> first of all Kaylee Cuoco is really good and I um I guess I've been seeing her for years you know and not even really thinking about it but she has this sort of uh, way about her that's just this just what I like nice friendly amiable happy personality you know it just comes through in like a lot of her characters uh, and I took the took a minute if I can find it <clears throat> to write down like some of her credits on camera she has a lot I didn't write them all and <laughs> I just kind of wrote them in the order that they showed up and then put the one that I know came earliest well I'll start with it because I know it came the first and I know that I saw it because I don't think I've missed anything that Donald Sutherland has been in since like the late 60s I'm gonna say Clute and now I'm not sure he's in it <laughs> but anyway the movie that's her earliest film credit that I could find it was from 1992 and it was called Quicksand No Escape uh, and it had uh, I didn't write it down but it had Donald Sutherland is that who I said before I think so so um she would have been really young and she didn't have a starring role oh so I put all of them away <laughs> and but um, then she did a bunch of other stuff that looked like voiceover work and animated for animated stuff and some kid stuff that I had not even heard of so I didn't that's all you're gonna get about that really there was eight simple rules which she did with John Ritter which ended because he had that weird heart thing that no one saw coming and it ended up killing him before they realized he was not feeling right <clears throat> and then also um, uh, uh, she did My So-Called Life she was on Charmed I think the original Charmed it would have to have been uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. and then it went to like Big Bang Theory and Harley Quinn the new uh, cartoon of Harley Quinn that's on HBO Max uh, uh, the Man from Toronto, which has Woody Harrelson and Kevin Hart, I think. And I watched a couple of episodes of that. I didn't really go back to it yet, but I guess she's in that too. She was in Hop, 
that uh, movie, Bunny movie. She was in Bratz the movie. So how it came out in 2011, Bratz the movie came out in 2007. Why him with uh, James Franco and Cranston that was in Breaking Bad. I want to say Donald, but I know that's not his name. Yeah, Mr. Cranston. <laughs> He's in that too, how? Or why him? I don't know. Now it's all confused. Uh, uh, and then she was also in the Seth MacFarlane movie, The Western, A Million Ways to Die in the West. So she's kind of all over the place. And there was like way more that I didn't put because I'd just be sitting here talking that all day. But anyway, there was some... It took me a long time to get here to like actually sitting in front of the camera and doing this because I don't know why way back in June I wanted to start doing this but in June I was having equipment issues and then my cat was sick and then it all moved into July and things got better and then they got bad again with my equipment and the cat was still sick and he kept getting worse and he kept like going outside and disappearing and I was like why well, don't do that because you know I can't well you don't know this but I'm in a wheelchair so I can't like go rolling around in looking in the bushes on the grass I don't know it's like uh, this is not an off-road situation for me I can't do it so I couldn't really go look for him properly and luckily my neighbor is kind enough to keep track of him for me kept bringing him back and now it was just really stressful and then stuff wasn't working again I just, that happens a lot where my stuff don't work <laughs> um it's not funny when it happens though boy I was bent out of shape so I was starting to think well dang if it's not that stuff is like me like I can't get it together like I said I've been kind of working on this just working on getting it together to get it in front of here <laughs> not a lot you know uh, kind of a lot of studying and a lot of thinking and a lot of writing, but that wasn't even the issue. I just, I knew I wanted to do it. I really enjoyed the show, and I just couldn't get it together. I don't know what the deal was, but it's, I'm better now. And I have done some stuff in between, but they were all kind of like... This is what I really wanted to do, and that other, those other things I wanted to do them, but I, it felt more like a little bit of a, a job or an obligation or something. Not, not in a negative way, but I don't want to explain that right now. That's not what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> so, this show is it, so good, really. I mean, it, the stories are amazing, and there's a bunch of them that are in here. It's like a really it's a weave <laughs> so Cassie she's in the middle of that sort of clock graph that I had to draw up because otherwise I would not have been able to keep track of sort of the main stuff going on those are not even all of the main characters from like the first season there's a lot going on so I'm gonna have to turn away just a little bit so I can see because I my vision is not that great and you don't want to look up my nose, so I'll just turn. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> uh, here at the top is her friend Shane. And Shane is a fellow flight attendant. And he has this other job that's kind of on the DL. And, you know, it's... It's, it's, this is fiction. This is what I had to keep reminding myself as I was watching this. It is a device. They're just right, telling the story. But Shane, for this other job he has, it's a federal job, right? And he has this hair. And in reality, I don't think there's any way in hell this particular branch of the government would be letting him run around with that hair. I don't care what he was doing. <laughs> I they give you a little leeway, but I don't think you get that much leeway. But he's a great character. He's interesting. He's like a pretty good friend and an interesting guardian. And then you have Annie here. And my scribbles say, friend, lawyer. And then there's a little arrow pointing down and it says Max, who is her boyfriend. And he is... Uh, 
a white collar criminal. <laughs> um, here we have Mo, and Mo McCray is, um, well, he ends up being Cassie's boss at an intelligence agency, and he's kind of a conflicted, uh, frustrated. I'm not sure. I mean, he's the supervisor. I think they call him a case agent, like hands out the cases. I'm not sure about that. I think I got that from a book. But he's her boss. And uh, he's kind of a mess. He's like a nervous wreck about some stuff. And then there at the bottom is another flight attendant friend, like Shane. Um, and she is wife, mom, trader, spy. Wife, mom, trader, spy, also friend. And her little offshoot says Bill, who is her husband, and his says <laughs> Fed Info Cuckold. Uh, the next uh, spot spoke over, the next spoke over is Alex, and he is lover. Victim and Conscience, it's another character in the story, and then here at nine o'clock we got Davy. He is her brother. He is husband, dad, brother. She lies to him all the time for reasons that I'm not gonna just. I'm not gonna tell you that right now. Uh, and here we have the final character that I added, and she's Miranda. And Miranda is spooky scary. She's corrupt. She doesn't seem to care who she injures. She doesn't really care too much when she gets injured. She's kind of a machine that way. And the thing about it is I watched all the seasons there are to date, which was a couple, maybe three. And I was looking at Miranda and going, hmm. She's a good, scary villain person. Well, and her uh, titles say villain and HBO stock villain, or HBO stock villain, because the reason why she's so familiar is because she plays almost the same character in Doom Patrol. Slightly different, but when it comes to being the villain part, it's kind of the same person, same deal. And I'm not complaining, she does it great, but. She better not do it in, anymore, and I, I, I just say that from a don't get typecast uh, point of view. I mean, she's really good at it, but I'm sure she's really good at other range. Uh, she's got range, I'm sure. <clears throat> other than villain. So, um... <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so... Cassie has had an interesting life. In fact, since I, this is the second time I'm doing this, I'm referring back to stuff you haven't seen. I'll just do it anyway. She, her life is kind of really screwed up, but it is another one of those fictional shillelaghs. Like, this one really hammers you. It, it goes so many crazy ways, and it's so good. <laughs> But, okay, the dynamic in her family, it's messed up. She comes from, like, a troubled background. The father, she's the daddy's girl, like, to a ridiculous degree. And then the son, Davy, her brother, is not at all the favorite child of the father. And you sort of are aware of these dynamics because they get talked about and stuff, and, like, you... I was kind of wondering, was there a mother? <laughs> because, wow, what a mess. And then it turns out you find out that there is a mother. And considering the what was happening in the family with the kids, like, the father was terrible to the son. The son is gay. And so, of course, there's got to be somebody that's just awful about it. And the Cassie's dynamic, like, I, I don't 
I know that I do the spoilers, but this show is so good I really don't want to spoil much. Cassie's deal with her dad, it's more than just she's his favorite. And it's... They get together and hang out almost like she's like the wife. The, the one that he'd rather spend time with. And that made me wonder, for one thing, why the hell didn't the actual wife and mother take them kids away out of that household? But she's made such a little part of the story. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, but it, it's in the script. What are you going to do, right? So um, my thought was, is this deal going on with Cassie and her dad growing up, I was like, well, you know, that could either be a metaphor for a like touchy feely father, or it's what the show says and that because look, it's crazy. There's no way I know it's fiction, but this is why I say it's a shillelagh. There's no way that what was going on with this kid would go unnoticed by the outside world, like outside of her family, like outside of her house, like where she has to go to school and stuff. This deal with her and her dad, people would have noticed. There's no way people would not have known. Like, there's just no way. But it's in the script, so it just it just happens. <laughs> okay. It does add to the excitement, though. I mean, if you're going to just be sitting there watching something that ain't real, it's pretty good not real. Um. So, yeah, that's interesting. And then... Pretty much everything that happens to the woman in her life is just so... Uh, I, I'm thinking of like Charlie Chaplin's Tramp where he just sort of stumbles through life and ha stuff happens to him and because of the way that he is, the stuff that happens is generally good, like things just work out well. And that's kind of her life, but she's not a tramp, although <laughs> maybe a little bit of the, um, the female kind of tramp, <laughs> just a little bit, just a touch, but that's because of her habits, <laughs> um, sort of goes with the, it's just part for the course, um, and uh, she's got like something going on with her brother, from childhood and then she's is the aunt that just comes along and disrupts the rules uh but she does okay with them it's a, a little scary for a moment i mean there's just so many stories in this one story it's kind of amazing so, um i guess i i really do i want to give away any more to than that I really don't. Uh, so, yeah. I guess that's it. Oh, no. It's not. Well, maybe it is. Uh, I was... Uh, oh, right. There is more. So, I... I even though I'm... I'm it's, it sounds like I'm finding fault with it. I'm not. I'm just... I'm just pointing out some observations that I made. So, I ended up really liking it. I didn't think I was going to. I thought it was a rom-com. It, <laughs> it's the best kind of rom-com if you're going to have one for me. Uh, so, <laughs> when it got to the end and I saw the credits, and I was like, oh, well, that's why I like it so much. Because I really have enjoyed shows on... CW Network, like the originals and Vampire Diaries and the Arrowverse shows. And turns out Jenny Lentz, who is, I believe, an executive producer on The Flight Attendant and probably the same or regular old producer on all those other shows that I mentioned. And they have a formula. Like, she, okay, speaking of rom coms. Jenny Lentz can be found in the credits of uh, Virgin River. 
which is a rom com drama. <laughs> it's a uh, it's very romancy, <laughs> but it has like uh, drug dealers and cops and like vendettas and things, and it's really good. Like also something I found during COVID when like all of my usual stuff was nowhere to be found. <laughs> I'm rooting around <laughs> looking for stuff, and I'd seen like the name Virgin River so many times. Like I was like, okay, I gotta check it out. And then I was watching, I was like, oh my god, this is like a total romance show, but I liked it. And I noticed when I was watching it, before I saw the credits, though, that every time some lovey thing started happening, like some sort of like teen mo music, like teen emo music would come on, that you would often hear, like every time somebody started to kiss in Vampire Diaries, and I noticed that, and I thought, huh, that's weird, that's kind of like, Oh well. Anyway, and then I got to the credits and I was like, hey! Because you can find her, I'm sure, in the credits for the Vampire Diaries, too. Uh, but that's not the only show that, like, her production group, Clump, did, though, uh, the Arrowverse. So, I'm just not sure. But it it's in the other show, so I'm thinking it must be her in that one, too. Uh, but that's what was happening in in Virgin River. I keep wanting to say divine. <laughs> in Virgin River is uh, somebody's gonna like hug and get close or make an eyes at each other and the mood, music would kick in and I'd be like mute for her because I pass. <laughs> but um snort. <laughs> Excuse me. I was actually really pleased to see that name there. It made me feel better about liking what I was seeing. I don't know why. Um, but there is a certain... They, whoever she works with, they are like expert pop jingle writers. They make such a catchy show, you know? Okay, that's it. Um, anything else? I don't think so. Thank you and good night.